Hello guys, welcome again. Today we are going to look at quadratic equations, how we can write a program that computes for the square the, the roots of a quadratic equation. So in this program we are going to see how we can output real roots, imaginary roots they are by using multiple functions in our C program. Yeah, here we go. We have to open our compiler as usual. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we are. We are writing our project. And what we have to do is to create uh, a new file. Yeah, we can click on that and then go our file quadratic quadratic one dot t. Yeah, that's our file. Yep. And then what we are required to do is to include a header file called stdio.h which includes uh, the standard input and output yeah <clears throat> so we shall write a command called include yes hash include hash include stdio.h yeah we need it and then after remember we are required uh, we are required to use multiple functions in our C program these are just comments. Yeah, <clears throat> we are required to use multiple functions in our C program. So we shall Then a function so we shall have. Functions one for the real part and two for imaginary part. Yeah, those are just comments. I just wanted to let the programmer know what we are going to really do now. I'll start right away with my pro functions. So I expect uh, my function to return a value 
and that value is going to be a floating value that my function is going to return. So the first function is to compute. Uh, this is a function to compute for the Yeah, it is going to return a floating value and you can call it 0, 01. Yeah, it's going to accept only three arguments. That's it. A, B, C. Yeah, a quadratic equation is of the form A, uh, uh, AX squared plus BX plus C. So we shall use the coefficients here. This. Uh, Yeah, so now we open the curly brackets. <coughs> the first, uh, remember, uh, when you're computing for the first root, we shall have negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2 a. Now uh, we shall have something here that is that uh, that y is the same as b squared. B squared you can simply write it in this way, p or w. But we shall need namespaces like uh, we shall need a library that contains namespaces like well, the library is called math.h, and it contains namespaces like P O W, which means power. So we shall have uh, B squared. Yeah, B squared, uh, which is simply power uh, B and two, which means B squared. If it will, if, if it was B two, it would be power B and three. Yeah. So we have B squared minus four uh, AC. Yeah, 4.0 is a floating value. It has to match with the y, which is float. Yeah, 4 AC. 4 AC. We terminate. Then, uh, yeah. Then we shall need x1, which is first, first root, which is x1 and is equal to negative b. So we simply open the bracket, yeah, open the bracket and write negative b, negative b, uh, negative b, which is negative 1.0, I must make it negative b, yeah, minus, yeah, minus, we can start with plus, but there are two roots, the one for plus and the one for minus, so plus the square root, is S2RIT. S2RIT, the square root of y. Yeah, because we wanted the square root of y that you can see. So it is negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4c. Yep. Yeah. And then divide by divide by 2a, which is 0 0.0 float times a. Yeah. You terminate and then return that value. Uh, we return x1 equals the one we wanted. So you see the reason as to why we say the float real one here when we are declaring our function. The reason as to why I put this word float is because I, I expect it to return a floating value x1. So after we terminate that function and go to a function uh, yeah a function to compute for the secondary root uh, and it's going to return a floating value and which we can call it real to which can accept arguments like, like a 
baju yang sebaik ini baju yang sebaik sih ya baik sih and then open curly brackets and you actually use the same functions because what's going to change is the plus to a minus so instead of having a plus here where you see instead of having negative b plus root b squared minus 4 is over 2 we shall use the same arguments here we are only changing instead of having x1 we shall have x2 so we can copy it and put it right there so instead of having x1 this time round we have the second root x2 yeah and x2 is not plus this time round remember it was plus or minus so now we are considering the minus part and we shall return x2 yeah as you can see yeah from there we can terminate that function and then work on the function yeah the the imaginary part so we can write a function the uh, function that computes for the real part of the imaginary yeah yeah so we can write it using float because we expect return a float <clears throat> now we can call it i m g r imaginary root or imaginary real uh, yeah or we can call it real imag real complex or real image like that <clears throat> and then we end so the one for imaginary roots <coughs> the real part is going to accept because the real part <coughs> remember the for you to have a complex root for like x equals to negative b we are using a bulldozer method this is what we are uh, simplifying to get what we shall use so x equals negative b plus or minus root uh, b squared minus 4 scf over to x remember <coughs> remember the 2a <coughs> dividing through other whole thing <coughs> now remember square root is the one that leads to uh, a complex number so we can separate it and get it because negative b over 2a plus or minus root of b squared minus 4 c over to x now b square uh, now on x equals negative b over 2k plus or minus b squared minus 4 is over 2k now we can handle uh, the two parts independent the negative b over 2k and uh, plus or minus root b squared minus 4 is over 2k now the, the, this function I'm working on is for the first part, part of negative b over 2k so can accept only arguments okay? and and b so uh, we can open those curly brackets and then so we can copy it xr x real uh, it's a floating type type uh, xr is equal to, to negative b which is simply negative 1 on 0 times b yeah that becomes negative b divided by yeah by 2a <coughs> which is in point zero times a yeah there we are then you can terminate so we expect this function to return the real part of the complex number 
It is called XR Terminate. Yeah, it's what we are returning, and you terminate the function. <coughs> so the second function. A function to compute for the for the complex part <coughs> and it's going to return a floating value here <coughs> so we can call it complex complex <coughs> excuse me and it's going to accept the values like uh, it's going to accept a b c so uh, flow uh, we can have the arguments we can have a we can have b we can have c <coughs> we can have c yes and then open curly brackets so Remember, it becomes complex because of a uh, square root of a negative number. So, uh, since we, uh, for now in our function, remember when you're getting the answer for a complex root, they give you the square root of the real number uh, times i. The i identifies a complex number. So now, we shall get that negative i and multiply it by a negative one. So <coughs> it will now become, so we can call that number inside the square root to be y. And it's actually equaling, uh, we can multiply it by a negative one to make it positive. So we have b squared, <coughs> excuse me, so b squared. Yeah, b squared minus 4ac, uh, which is now 4.0, 4 4.0 times a times c. <coughs> yeah, uh, you terminate. Then from there, we can get the imaginary part. <coughs> yeah, so. Uh, the time was here, we have to put an asterisk. Yeah. So now, uh, we can uh, we can get a formula to compute for the imaginary part. We can call it IM and is equal to <coughs> is equal to the square root. Yeah equal to the square root of uh, this this y we've just computed s to rt yeah s to rt of y yeah the square root of y divided by 2a which is 2.0 times a yeah terminate so we have to return the binary part done I yeah and then terminate that yeah we are good to go uh, from there uh, we can go straight away to our main function because as you know the compiler only understands the main program so if you don't put it there it won't understand anything and it won't run into as <coughs> now since we expect to return an like to tell the compiler that it has stopped returning a zero, we should identify the data type of what is returning in then main. If you do if you do not expect it to return anything, you can start with void main. Yeah, that's when you don't expect the compiler to return anything like anything. Yeah after compiling but if you expect it to return an integer you use int main yeah int main <coughs> yeah open 
curly brackets yeah into main and then we can yeah from the main function that's where you tell the user of the program to tell him the purpose for that this is a program to do so and so enter this enter this yeah where it outputs so we can make our program presentable by saying that yeah that this this program the form of the form of the form ax squared yeah ax squared ax squared plus bx bx plus c equal to zero yeah of that form for any form you have to sort yourself maybe uh, in another program yeah so we shall tell we shall tell the user <coughs> to enter yeah to enter a b c d yeah, yeah. we shall have to enter we shall have to enter. We shall have to enter A and then scan it from the keyboard. So before entering them, we have to declare them. So we shall have uh, floating values of A, B, and C. <coughs> yeah. So from there. We can enter it from the keyboard, scan if, and then uh, identify the data type of load, and then store in the memory address of A. Yeah. Then we shall have to, uh, to enter B. Enter B and scan it from the keyboard <coughs> and the data type for what we are entering this float and then store it in the memory address of B. Then we shall have to enter to enter C and then scan it from the keyboard. Then the data type for that variable is and it will be stored in the memory address of T. Yeah. Now from here, yeah. we shall yeah. need um, uh, identify whether either any either thing we have in the square root is is uh, is uh, either positive or negative the b squared minus 4ac that identifies uh, whether we uh, it shows that whether we have complex or real roots so mm, checking We are going to check for the nature of the roots. So we shall check that by by first computing for the value of what we have in the root. So what we have in the root is b squared, which is power of b. Uh, 
as a power of b is 2 uh, b squared minus uh, 4 minus 4 uh, 4a c yeah minus 4ac you terminate yeah that's what we have under the square root so uh, we are checking uh, for uh, we know that real roots exist if uh, real roots exist if the y we have inside the square root is either uh, greater uh, is either greater or equal or equal to zero so it can either be zero or greater than that <coughs> so so if we have that we can actually uh, compute for the roots we know that the first root the first root which is x1 is equal to we can call we can now call our function the function for the first root was called real one so we can use it float uh sorry it's called real one we can use it real one yeah it's there and if you open the brackets it shows you the arguments you must enter you must enter a yeah, the data don't, don't mind about the data type you already declared it as a floating value so you enter a b c so we enter a b and c yeah mm, and terminate and we also need uh, the second root the second root we can call it x2 and the function that computed for the second root uh, for the second root, yeah, is here real two, yeah, real two, and it's called real two, real two, yeah, and it can accept arguments like a, uh, b, and c, yeah, you terminate. <coughs> then after we can print what we have, so we are going to print the results. Uh, we can print them on a new line. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can call them roots. Yeah, roots. And on a new line, we put them on a new line. So, x1, uh, x1 equals to a floating value. We can take only two decimal places, all one decimal place. Let's take two, two decimal places. Yeah, and on a new line, we put x2. Yeah, on a new line, we put x2, and it's equal to, to that value, uh, two decimal places. Two decimal places. Is, then we can refer x1 is this one we can refer to x1 is x1 and also for x2 we refer to yeah, after you start then uh, outside um, yeah, uh, after printing this we can put the next words on a new line then after that, we can check. Uh, yeah, we are now checking for complex rules. And if, yeah, don't mind about that. So if, yeah, if this Y. Uh, if the y we have there is actually less than uh, if the y we have is less than uh, zero then we shall know that whatever we have here yeah, under the square root like in our function 
look at our function yeah mm. yeah yeah whatever you have in the square root is negative so we shall open the brackets look something so the first function uh, we can call it uh, the first part of of the complex root is the real part we can call it xr and it can be gotten from the function that you have here xr that you're seeing here so the name of the function is called real emag so real emag can accept only two arguments and so it's real emag is here right here open brackets so you see it can only accept two arguments a and b so you can enter a and b then terminate then uh, we also want the the we also want the imaginary part and the imaginary part for the form and we also accept so I am we can call it I am and it's the, the function is called comp for that and it can only accept two, uh, three arguments A, B and C yeah you have to terminate there then after that we are going to print the answers so uh, we are going to print the answers um, uh, we have complex roots. Complex roots and on a new line. On a new line, we have x1. And x1 equals to percentage is xr plus the first part of the imaginary so xr uh, is xr percentage uh, we can take one decimal place for that percentage point one f yeah uh, the first one is plus uh, the imaginary part the first imaginary part of plus so which is percentage uh, it can also be for uh, to one decimal place. Yeah, percentage that F I remember uh, complex looks how have that I and on a new line we are going to write the same root and it's going to be equal. Uh, the real part does not the XR so the percentage for each one F yeah as usual minus now we are taking the second part of the of the of the complex roots yeah as you can see yeah 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 now uh, it will be percentage we to one if we take to one decimal place uh, I still we need an I. I won't change anything. It will just be printed as it is. Just want to identify complex numbers. So this first percentage F is R. So we can refer to R to XR. Sorry, is XR. Um, the second percentage is I M. So we can refer to I M. I M, yeah. The third percentage is X R, X R, and the fourth percentage is I M, yeah. So determinate, but we can put other words the block ones on the line, yeah. After that, you do return, uh, return zero. Return zero and terminate. We tell our compiler to stop, we save, and 
time. So, save. If you don't know how to save the shortcuts, you can go to file on this. So, by running, you can click on this uh, run button, or you can press Ctrl Alt and E. Yeah. Yeah, as you can see, it has run successfully. That like this program computes the roots of quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So you can enter the roots. You can test for yourself and see if it runs properly or not. So uh, we can get an example here that we can use to be sure that our program really gives us the required output. Yeah. Yeah, we have A is 1, B is 5, and C is 6. Oh, let's see if the answers are correct. Yeah, X1 is negative 2, and C. Yeah, the answers are correct, negative 2 and negative 3. Uh, now, we have to test for complex roots. Yeah, we can use this. Yeah, you can follow. You can follow me. So we have an example: of complex roots x plus six x plus twelve equals to zero. So, uh, uh, the first uh, a is one. Uh, b is negative six. Negative six and c is 12 so yeah it's correct uh the roots are 3 plus or minus 1.732 i yeah since we rounded off to one decimal place that is okay with an i thank you for watching yeah next time